Iris has a variety of processing power to it. I'm going to show you just a couple of the tools that I use for my particular uh, version 7 processing routine. I typically will apply all of my post processing after I've assembled an RGB image in the previous examples. You may again wish to adjust the threshold up or down. I will also apply additional wavelets from the processing screen wavelet. I've actually found the wavelets in Iris to be slightly more forgiving and slightly softer than the Registax ones. I will stay down at the finest and the fine resolution levels. These are the equivalents of the 1 and 2 in Registax. If you want real-time verification, you can click the Auto Verify button. I usually will grab the finest and move it up to about 3, and when I release the button, you'll see it sharpens up a little. This is not my best data to show you an example of. I'll bring the fine up to about two or so. You see a little bit of additional data popping out and then I say OK. At some point if I feel that the colors are off significantly I will also highlight a small section of what I believe to be white in the image, in this case some of the uh, zones on Jupiter. And I'll use the command window again referenced from here to issue the white command. Now that will set the levels to the following values here. Red goes up 1.2, green stays the same, and blue goes up. If uh, you feel this is a slightly in error from the suggestion it gave you, you can adjust that yourself by going into the view white balance adjustment. From here you can bring levels up and down individually or link them together. I always thought Jupiter was slightly more brown so I'm going to pull some of the blue out, maybe add a touch more back in. I have a lot of fun with the white balance here, and uh, it becomes a nice closed feedback loop into your actual processing routine as well, or processing routine combined with your capture routine. The other thing I play around with sometimes is the unsharp mask. I discovered this one because it's a little bit harsher and stronger than just the wavelets. Again, turn on Auto Verify. For my capture routine, I typically will, do, will go to a resolution of 2. And you notice it becomes very, very grainy here, but you do see some additional data. Play with the contrast a bit here as well. Softens it up slightly. Now I'm going to leave the grain in here because there's also a, a third function that I like to play with in addition to wavelets and the unsharp masking and that one is the blur filter. Now the blur filter is somewhat like a Gaussian filter although you can move the slider and get some real-time feedback as to what it's doing here. I probably apply way too much unsharp masking and we'll slide the blur filter to the top. You notice it's a little softer. I say OK and then I will go in and maybe apply a, a second round of this. So this is all uh, the cook in the cook, uh, cook in the kitchen. You need to figure out how much of what kind of processing you like to apply. But I've had some success with this, and uh, I'm calling it my version seven scheme. There you have it. Save it. Send it into your uh, labeling system, or however you want to send it to the web. There are. Uh, JPEG and FIT and TIFF files formats in here for sending into Photoshop and a variety of different applications like that. I use GIMP. I'm not going to include that one here because, again, that's the, the cook in the kitchen. Thanks for watching and good luck. Happy processing.